One option is to just increase the number of elements so that LE becomes smaller. We would expect that the FEM solution would converge to the exact solution as the elements get smaller. However, using linear elements, the rate of convergence to the exact solution will be slow. For example, doubling the number of elements only reduces the error, so 2 times n e, the error reduces by only a factor of about 4. This means that we would need very high resolution models in order to obtain a reasonably accurate solution. Now, one dimension, this isn't really a problem, but for 2D and 3D problems, higher resolution models are very large and computationally demanding. Instead, another option is to use higher order elements. For example, we could use quadratic interpolation between the nodes of the grid instead of linear interpolation. For reference, on the left side of this slide is a linear element. And for these, for this linear element, the interpolation functions had a value of 1 at the node, so that for n1 this would go from 1 to 0, and for node 2 it would go from 1 to 0 in reverse. On the right side of this slide, let's draw a quadratic element. To make a quadratic element, we need to add one more node somewhere in the middle of the element. It doesn't need to be right at the midpoint, but the midpoint is convenient and a good place to start with. So let's add a node here in, right in the middle of this element. This element will still extend along the x-axis from x1 for the element to x2 for the element. And now as we number the nodes for this quadratic element, I'm going to deviate from the book here because I think it's easier to just number the nodes straight across from left to right for both the local node numbers and the global node numbers. Also, this is more consistent with other books on the finite element method. So the left node here will be 1, as before for linear elements. The middle node will be 2, and the right node will be 3. So the book has 2 and 3 reversed. When we assemble all the nodes together, we'll also number the nodes straight from left to right. So if we had, say, a whole bunch of elements here and a node right in the middle of each, we'll, we're going to just number them straight across. Using quadratic elements, doubling the number of elements will reduce the error, so 2 times n e means the error will go down by a factor of 8 rather than 4 as we had for linear elements. So the error goes down as Le to the power n plus 1 where Le is the length of the element and n is the order of the elements. So here for quadratic n is equal to 2. Now what do you think the interpolation functions will look like for quadratic elements? We'll have analogous formula, an analogous formulation for the quadratic functions as for the linear interpolation functions. That is, we're going to have a value of 1 at the corresponding node and 0 at the other nodes. But now the shape of the function will be quadratic instead of linear, which you can see here. Here are the three quadratic interpolation functions for the three nodes of the quadratic elements. So here is n1. And you'll notice for n1, the interpolation function has a value of 1 at node 1 and 0 at the other two nodes. Notice 0 is right here. Uh, then for n2, same thing, 1 at the middle node and 0 at the other two nodes. And for n3, 1 at the third node and 0 at the other two nodes. We can derive the interpolation functions and how you can derive these is shown in the book, but in the interest of time, I'll just tell you that n1 is 1 half psi times psi minus 1. You can plug in psi values and check that you get 1 and zeros at the appropriate locations. For n2, 1 plus psi times 1 minus psi. For n3, we get 1 half psi times psi plus 1. Let's try changing our FEM code so that it has quadratic elements instead of linear elements. Let's see if we can obtain a more accurate result 
than we did with linear elements. Before we get started, make a copy of your one-dimensional FEM code so you don't mess up your working model with linear elements. Also, we're going to be superimposing the linear and the quadratic results later, so make sure you save your code that has linear elements. And give this second file a new name, maybe use the word quadratic in it or something, since we'll be using quadratic elements in this second file. After you create the new file, carefully look through the current version of your FEM code and make a list of everything you think can stay the same in your code and what in the code needs to change in order to convert to quadratic elements having three nodes per element and these new interpolation functions rather than the two nodes per element and the other interpolations we had in the previous version of this code.